The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 16th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out with those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question and in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow up. 87, the S&P up 3, NASDAQ 100 down 6, and the Russell is off 11. Um, I can't tell you who's really leading the charge. The upside, I'm just stepping back in front of my computer screen. was away all morning long, and I can say I need to reboot it. Uh, but we don't need to know what's moving higher and lower. What we need to know is uh, what it is you want me to take a look at. But let's begin the uh, show out here by taking a look at the short-term time frame charts. That might be most helpful. And we'll do that by just simply bringing over the 30-minute time frame charts. We're going to go searching for bottoms out here. And as we pull over the chart, first we're going to notice you've got a nice road momentum indicator top that had formed earlier this morning. And that led to what? That led to a TD nine-count bottom. That TD nine-count bottom happened at exactly 1230. It was, it was the bar following bar number nine that identified that bottom. Now, what we have here. And you can see that that oscillator and change line, that's the green and red line out here, changed colors at 1130 this morning. Now, what typically happens when that line changes color is we see price and that line catch up to each other. When it catches up to each other, that's the test that you and I are looking for. So you got the TD9 count bottom, got the oscillator and change line has changed colors. You got price moving up uh, towards the uh, uh the center of its uh, current profile, that's at 39.34. We should see the line continue to fall, continue to rise. But what you're looking for here, the signal will be if price tests and rejects. What I mean is gets up there, tests it, and then trades lower, continues to trade lower. That could be the signal of at least an A to B equals CD to the downside. But right now inside the ES Mini, on the 30-minute time frame chart, the bottom is makes sense because of that TD9 count. And now we're going to watch to see how price and that oscillator and change line deal with each other when that happens. I can't tell you when that's going to happen. I don't know if it's in the next five minutes or two hours, but it will happen. If we take a look at the NQ out here, you're going to see the same type of pattern. Here you've got a nice road momentum indicator top. This completes that pattern at 7.30 this morning. And then what that does is that sets off a move to create a TD nine count right at a breakout level, which was 13, 7, 18 and a quarter. In its, in, its, in its case, we also have a oscillator and change line that change color. So price net line are going to test each other. The current oscillator and change line is at 13,819, price at 13,793. What you want to watch for is what happens as that test unfolds. Again, a test and rejection is move lower. What happens if a test and it's not a rejection? Well, if it's not a rejection, price should go tag the top of the current profile, which right now is at 13,827. Look, this could these profiles could change. But right now, that is the price target out there, both of those. Let's go take a look at the Dow. I believe we're going to see the same thing. But, again, I'm just sitting fresh in front of the screens out here. I do 
do see a nine count on the Dow. I don't see one in the Russell 2000. Okay, so let's take a look at the Dow equity future contract. We're looking at that 30-minute time frame. Same type of pattern setup. It has a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That formed at, uh, that completed at 7.30 as well. And that left, sent to, uh, that moved, that created this TD9 count to the bottom. It was the bar following bar number nine that identified that bottom. Here we're going to see, it looks like price and the oscillator and change line with the YM are going to tag each other perhaps first. That number is 31,498 or thereabouts because that number is going to move. But you're, again, you're watching for the same kind of uh, outcome here. How does the, how does price and the oscillator and change line, um, what type of result do they get upon their test? Maybe we'll get it during the show. That would be great if we do. But if we don't, that's what you're going to want to watch for. And it's approximately the 31, 490-ish type area out there. Let's go take a look at the Russell 2000, the stubborn one out here, because it didn't generate a uh, TD9 count bottom. Let's go see if it generated any kind of a bottom. Did it come back to a breakout level? And uh, no, not. I mean, it's crushed through two breakout levels out here and only bar number six to the downside. So the Russell 2000, maybe it's just waiting uh, for the uh, ES, the NQ and the YM to do a test and rejection before the Russell 2000 decides to head lower. That's the only read that I've got on it at this point in time. And that's because prices, we don't have a TD9 count bottom. I'd be stretching to call it an A to B equals CD to the downside. I don't like to do that. And price has now broken through two of its TD9 breakout levels on its 30-minute time frame. Uh, so 22.7760, as long as price remains below that, uh, that is suggesting lower price inside of the Russell 2000. Now, that was the daily time frame charts out there. I'm sorry, the 30-minute time frame charts. Let's go take a look at uh, what's going on on the daily basis out here and on the daily basis just looking at the TAS market profiles at this stage of the game here we can see that uh, price is above the top of the daily and weekly on the ES on the NQ and the Dow it's Russell 2000 so if the Russell 2000 just d does head lower it has a bearish structured profile today's high has been uh, 2314 the top of that box 2316 and change out there so we know that resistance is held. You also now know where clear resistance is at, 23.17 is what we'll call it. If price does move lower, and it's right now sitting right on the center of its bearish structured profile, what's at the center of its bearish structured profile? Both buyers and sellers that believe it's fairly valued in between the price range of 22.15 and 23.16. So it's not giving you and I an edge just yet out here. And I think that in order to assess what the market's next intentions are, we have to watch that 30-minute time frame and its test of that oscillator and change line to give us some type of uh, to give us some type of clue out there. With regard to uh, with regard to gold, here's a 30-minute time frame chart for gold. We know that uh, price pulled back to test a little rising trend line out there, and. There clearly is an A to B equals CD to the downside. But here in the case of gold, this shows you the power of these TAS market profiles. So in just a 30-minute time frame, you can see it was bullish in structure. So at 1030 is when that new bullish structured profile formed out here. Price got above, most certainly got above the center of that box, and price ran all the way up to the top. 181390. That's where any counter trend rally should have ended on the 30-minute time frame. And that is in fact what has transpired thus far with regard to this is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a minute. in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, Bam! as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. 
If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245, and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Look at natural gas for one of our dinners out here. And the question is... Can I please review a short-term entry point into uh, UNG? That would be the ETF for natural gas. So what we have up on our screen right now, uh, first you can see at the very top portion of the screen are all the, uh, not all, but uh, the futures contracts going out to May of 22. So you can see how each of them are trading, how each of them are priced. And along the bottom of our screen, we have the uh, current uh, four contracts. We've got the uh, March contract. The April contract, which is rolling, prices, uh, natural gas is rolling over into the April contract. Then you've got May and June out here. So what I don't know, TKC, is uh, what contracts are inside of the UNG out there. So you have to take a look at that. But I'm going to focus here on the April contract for us. If that's not what's in there, that's what is likely to uh, be in there shortly. So today's price activity. You can see that there is a descending trend line. You can see the descending trend line on each of these contracts. Again, we're focused on panel number two, in fact, just simply so that nobody gets confused. Here's panel number two, and that's all that we're looking at. So it's trading inside the cone of silence out here. You've got both a rising and descending trend line out there, and the price is just trading within it. But price has rejected the breakout so far. So what that really says to you and I is you're looking for an entry point We've got to go take a look at the short-term time frame charts to see if there's any kind of a signal here. Why did price find – well, we know that there was resistance levels, but early in the morning, price was well up above those areas, but it has rejected it. So we've got to go take a look at the short-term time frames. Let's pull the uh, charts over here, my white background charts, and see what we can figure out. Now, on a short-term time frame, well, we can start with 5, 10, 15, 30. Let's just start with the 30-minute time frame. First, on the daily, uh, what I don't have out here – well – Actually, on the daily, TKC, you see this little shooting star candle out here? Let me get my crosshair. Might make it easier. Uh, that was on the trading day of February the 2nd. That was a bear shooting star that confirmed a sell the D point. So that is still resistance. That resistance level is 2.935. This is the April contract that we're looking at. We're trading at 2.931. So that resistance level has held. Strong resistance area. Now, let's go look at the shorter term time frames. I want to begin with the 30 minute. I don't want to go back to the 15, 5, and 10 minute out here. So on the 30 minute time frame, what we can see 
is we can see, let's get that crosshair going on this chart as well. We can see a nice roads momentum indicator pattern that formed at 10 o'clock this morning. And what happened? Price pulled back. Why did it stop right there? I don't know. I don't have the answer there because I don't have a bottom, but it did form a hammer candle. So that does say that the low that formed earlier today, that's an important low to watch, 2.905, because a close below that TKC would tell you it's headed lower. What we see here is the same phenomena that we looked at with the 30-minute time frame charts for the ESNQ and YM. You can see the oscillator and change line has changed colors. So this suggests, hey, don't buy into the fact that it's bottom just yet and that your entry point was this morning. You really should see what unfolds with the price test of the oscillator and change line, currently about 2.954 and price. If it's a test and rejection, that's a signal that your entry point is much lower. If price cruises through it, it might mean that, okay, guess what? That was your signal of the entry point out there. So that's one factor. Let's look at a 60-minute time frame chart out here, because if it's going to roll to the downside, we should see this occurring on all of its time frames. All right. So we don't have the topping signal necessarily on the 60-minute time frame, but if we take a look, remember on the 30-minute, I said I couldn't tell you why price stopped where it did. Now that we flip to the 60-minute time frame, we have that answer. Voila. It is the breakout level for the 60-minute time frame, 2.918. So that could be an entry point, TKC. However, in looking at that 30-minute time frame, I really think you should wait for that test of that oscillator and change line and priced out there. But you've got to do what you've got to do. I'm just going to narrate the charts for you. The 120-minute, the two-hour time frame chart, this shows us also that it has a breakout level. This was a TD9 count top. So if price of 2.922 does not hold, the signal is 2.817 would be your entry point into going long uh, the UNG or could be your entry point to going long into the uh, UNG. Of course, um, you know, uh, trying to time it between futures hours and then the cash market hours is not such an easy thing to do. But we do see that price held support. How about the four hour time frame chart? What do we have out here? We've got a roads momentum indicator top uh, support here. If price closed below the top of its profile, the top of its profile is really right around where it's trading right now, around 29, 2.926, give or take. If price closes below that, you could be looking to move down to 282, 285, five-hour time frame chart, where you've got a TD9 count top here. So TKC, the daily did everything and had everything within its power to cruise through the resistance levels that we were looking at earlier. Let's pull those back up out here. It didn't. You've got these topping signals for many of the shorter term time frame charts. And to answer your question, we've got to wait till we see a clear bottom out here. And we don't see it. We understand why price stopped where it did, but we don't have a real clear signal. Now, I know that doesn't answer your question, but in a, to a certain extent, it does answer your question. And so at this stage here, it says to be patient. I'll put up the UNG ETF out here. And there's really not a whole lot that we can use on this, in, in my opinion, in looking at the chart. So uh, thanks for the question. I hope that helps you out. And uh, by the way, folks, I'm having uh, uh, audio issues and uh, with my headphones. And so I'm not able to take calls at the moment. But you can continue to call into the studio. And uh, our production staff will go ahead and uh, forward your request on to uh, me. And, of course, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Let's take a look at um, – we did have a request come in here earlier, and this one is from Alan. And Alan wants to take a look at ticker symbol AB. AB is Alliance Bernstein. And the question is, you're looking for support and resistance in all time frames. So – Support and resistance, all time frames. You've got it really right here, or you've got at least the primary ones. If you take a look at the support or resistance of the TAS market profiles, price is above all of them, daily, weekly, and monthly. When you're above profiles, short of having a topping signal out there, tells your price wants to move higher. Today could be, Alan, could be the first day above the top of its bearish structured daily profile. Looks like it formed last Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. So... A close above 38.28 today or 38.48 would be a signal that you're going to go back and retest the high. The high out here was really just a few days ago up at the 39.65 area. Again, as long as price stays above 38.28, that's what the message is to you. Let's pull over the A, B chart, see if there's any other area. So support in this case here, 
old resistance, 3828, could become your new support level. As far as support levels on the weekly and monthly time frame, they're the top of the profiles. They're down quite a ways, 2920 and 3150 out there. Let's go see if we can find any other maybe breakout support for its uh, daily time frame for you. Let's go over to the daily time frame. We can see that price right now is trading below the oscillator and change line. There was a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That was the bear sash candle that formed on February 9th out here. So AB is not out of the uh, woods by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, it is above the top of its daily profile. And Stevie did say, short of any seeing any kind of topping patterns out here, uh, that uh, that was a bullish signal. Well, guess what? Price only made it up to its oscillator and change line. That's kind of like a trend at the stage of the game. So the uh, daily is saying, be careful. Now, Alan, we're about to go to a breakout here. As soon as we get back to the break, I'll surf through the uh, short-term time frame chart see if there's any other information on the daily 34 32 also be a support. Steve Rhodes with TF and N. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, let me get my uh, charts back up on the uh, screen for you. And we were taking a look at uh, Alliance Bernstein, AB is a ticker symbol, and this is for Alan. And Alan is already in the position and wants to uh, add to it. So his question is, you know, where should he where should he add? So the daily time frame, we've got the Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Its message to us really right now is 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 neutral to bearish. 
Neutral only because price is above the top of the bearish structure daily profile. Bearish because of the bearish pattern, the Rose Momentum Indicator top. And I said more bearish than neutral because price is below the oscillator and change line. So again, let's go look at the 30 minute, the short term time frame charts. We can see a TD nine count top that formed just before its breakdown resistance at 39.11. We also see the oscillator and change line has changed from red to green. There's going to be a test of that. That's in the 38.34 level out here. If that level does not hold, Alan, price should target the 37.45 level. Now, is 37.45 the entry point, or is it 38.34? I'm uncertain. Let's go look at the other time frame chart, see what signals they're generating for us. 65 minute time frame chart, not really helping us. It's more bullish than anything else. Price above the oscillator and change line, as well as the top of its profile. Is there a top? Yeah, there is. It's way back on February 9th. Uh, so, you know, has it bottomed out there? Well, I don't see a bottoming pattern on this time frame. If we look at the 130 minute time frame, it's got a nice TD9 count. Price is consolidating with inside its profile could get up to 39.38. The question is, do I have a clear signal for Allen here? You've got a TD9 count top on the 195 minute chart. The weekly chart out here still looks very bullish. No topping signal as we speak right now. So longer term, which Allen is really into this longer term, it does look like it wants to continue to move higher. On the monthly time frame, you are in bar number eight of a TD9 count and wave number seven, letter G that's on my screen out there. But that is not enough to say, hey, time to jettison the position. So you're looking for the entry point, and just like in when we take a look at UNG out here, I don't think we have the information that's been revealed to us just yet. And be patient. So since you're already long, I would be patient and watch to see what happens. See if price pulls back to the 38.30 level, rejects it and moves higher, uh, or if it uh, gets below that, and possibly 37.45 would be the place to add to your position. So, Alan, I hope that that helps you out. Happy to look at this again over the next couple of days for you. Just go ahead and send me an email or call in uh, when, uh, when you're ready to do that. Uh, Brent in Martinez, California, is asking the question about gold. Wants to know if there is uh, support at gold at the, I think it was 17, 1760 area. So let's do this for Goldilocks. Let's do it a couple of different ways out here. When I say a couple of different ways, let me get gold going on my other charts, my white background charts. And let's come here and let's look at this time frame, this, this set of charts out here for gold print. And this gives us but I'm using my synthetic version of the contract. So that way it allows us to take a look at longer term profiles. Here we have daily, weekly, monthly and quarterly. So what is it that we see here right now? First, price did find support this morning at a rising trend line. Is that going to hold? So price got down to 1788 and really hit that rising trend line. So there is some support there, that kind of support. It's trend line support. But price is below the bottom of the daily profile. And so if that was support, when we go take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, we should see some kind of bottoming patterns on all the intraday time frames if this is more than just a if this, if this is the potential for a nice bottoming signal. And what we should also do, Brent, is go take a look at the U.S. dollar index. So let's do all of those. Now, on the weekly time frame chart, price is below the bottom of that weekly profile. It's been below that profile for three weeks. That is not really good. Let me restate that. That's not good at all. Okay, now that was clear. When I say not good at all, if this trend line fails, where is price going to head to next? That level should be between 1723 and 1739. 1723 is the top of the quarterly profile. 1739 is the uh, center of its bearish structured profile. And what happens if price gets below 1739? Where is it headed to? You can read this. Just look at the bottom of the left-hand chart. These are not numbers Stevie's making up. These are where buyers are sitting right now on a weekly time frame and that would be at 1561 so 173970 should price get down there is going to be a real key level now what i want to do here before we go take a look at the us dollar index is pull over my other gold charts my other gold charts let's take a look at the um daily time frame again daily time frame see if there's any kind of signal out here there's not no positive, no bullish signal. Let's go take a look at the let's stay let's let's stay with the 30 minute time frame out here. The 30 minute time frame, as we mentioned earlier, that might have been during the uh, the uh, uh, the one o'clock update. Although I can't draw it in here, I can visually see an A to B equals CD to the downside. And so support did hold on the 30 minute time frame, but the counter trend move also held. 
And the counter trend move was the top of that profile that had formed, which was really at about the highs at about the 1814 level. Now, new profile just formed at 130. And the bottom, which is support, is 1790, 70, and resistance is 180120. So, Brent, those would be numbers that you could be looking at as well. Closing by 1801 would say price could run all the way up to 1826. That's not what it's expressing to us at the moment. The one hour chart out here shows what? And that question was really meant for me. It's not showing me anything other than price trading with inside its profile. And quite frankly, the 30 minute chart is providing us with better information than the 60-minute chart. So I would just discard the 60-minute chart for the day as far as signals. Instead, I would be focused on the 30-minute. Let's go take a look at the two-hour time frame chart. The two-hour time frame chart here, not well, we do have wave number seven. So this did have another bottom or a bottoming pattern at a breakout level of 1790 to You like how that works? I do. Now, what price hasn't done, it hasn't cleared any level of resistance. In fact, that spike higher uh, that we saw inside of Goldilocks, remember, that got up to the top of the daily profile in that 30-minute time frame? Well, guess what? On the two-hour time frame, it got to the bottom of that profile, an area where a counter-trend rally would stop. And that was at 1814. Let's go look at the four-hour time frame chart, see if there's any kind of signals out here. The only signal out here is that price hasn't taken out a previous low that had that TD9 count, and price has held the TD9 count breakout level of 1793. But price also, again, during this bar, this four-hour bar, ran up into that oscillator and change line, rejected and moved back lower. So Brent's asking the question, is there support? We've answered the question that there is support where price moved back to. But what we have not answered or what we have not seen, in fact, go to a 15-minute time frame chart, we have not seen any kind of a signal that that is the bottom inside of uh, Goldilocks. So at the moment, that's what the charts are communicating to you and I. That being the case, then let's go take a look at the U.S. dollar index because the U.S. dollar index uh, looked like this morning at about 7.00. 7.30, 4 to 8, something along those lines, was that it was getting ready to uh, to move substantially lower. But guess what? That is not the case at all. Because what has held is the bottom of that daily profile. And that's at $90.27. If you were ever wondering what is a key price level of support inside the U.S. dollar index, it is 90.278. It's been tested for out of the last five sessions. I'm not talking about, you know, four out of five dentists recommend using, uh, who knows what they recommend. But Stevie's saying four out of five test market profiles are saying, guess what? Strong support for that U.S. dollar index at 90.27. And again, I'll give Tom a dollar. You can't bust it down. What's the price going to do? Bust them up. And Brent, that would have me staying shy of calling some kind of bottom inside of uh, Steve Rhodes with TF and N. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make his job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter the path of least resistance is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. 
Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We the dollar twenty eighties, eighty-eight points. The S and P is uh, flat out here. If we've got, uh, we've got uh, nine questions in the queue. It's like O'Hare Airport, so I won't be able to be as thorough if I'm going to get through all of these. But let's do our best. Hector and the fuel injectors wants to take a look at. Uh, oh man, Hector Regenerin. I thought it was Tesla. What did I do out here? So, R E G N, which is totally fine. Uh, it's just going to take me a couple of minutes to get my other charts here going. But let's put up the Regeneron pharmaceutical chart, uh, our three time frames out here. And uh, you can see right now the price is trading below the bottom of the daily, below the bottom of the weekly at this point, which is 484.10. And so that is suggesting possibly that this moves lower. You want to load up the wagon with Regeneron right here, right now. Uh, well, let's go pull over my other charts out here. These are suggesting, yeah, not so fast out here. Not unless we can see some type of a clear bottom. Now, here we go. Let's put up this uh, white background chart out here. And let's go to the daily time frame. So in the case of Regenerin Pharmaceuticals, I've had this on my watch list out here. I had it on my watch list because of the TD9 count pattern that formed out here on February 9th, right at breakout support, 487.93. Uh, now, we did not take that trade. The reason we didn't take that trade was because price was below the bottom of this profile and the oscillator and change line. And as I indicated to uh, subscribers, let's wait. Let's pay higher price to get in this trade and have it prove itself to us. Well, here we can see that price is now trading below that breakout support of 487.93. And that suggests lower price. Now, lower price may be back to the TD9 bottom that formed on January 5th. I don't know if that's where price will hold support. That's at 467 even, Stephen. Uh, is that the place that you would load up the truck? I don't know. I'd really have to see some really great signals on the intra day time frames on uh, the monthly time frame out here with regard to regenerate pharmaceuticals what do we have for you there is a td9 count bottom but if price gets below closes below not just gets below but closes below 498.73 regenerate pharmaceuticals has got some major problem going on because that says 279.22 could be its next stop i'm not making that as the prognostication out here but right now is not the time to uh, reload even on a 30 minute time frame chart hector even if I'm doing my best for you, which I always do, there's no bottom signal on that short period, short period time frame. So now is not the time to load up. Oh, I see. It was the next question that came in that was uh, asking about Tesla. That was just Stevie's inability to read very well. Of course, you you folks that listen to the show, you're 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 familiar with that. <laughs> you get to you get to hear me talk and misread things all the time. But let's go take a look at if we can Tesla. Let me get that also fired up. T S L A is the ticker symbol. Let's get this on our back black background charts. And this question coming in from Tim M. And Tim says, "Could you please take a look at TAS profiles for Tesla on a daily and weekly basis?" You betcha, Tim. Here we go. Your TAS market profiles daily support is between. 689 and 754. It's a bullish structured profile. Resistance is six, uh, 862. 
On the weekly time frame here, you've got support at 733. 733 is the top of the weekly profile. If price were to close below that, you're looking at 599 to 666, a very devilish looking 666 at that. And on the monthly time frame, forget about that because that profile is at 243.06. So that's your profile levels. Uh, thanks so much for writing in. Hope that that helps you out. The next question coming in from uh, Dan, and Dan wants to take a look at Tilray. T-L-R-Y is the uh, ticker symbol out there. And X. I'm just trying to really multitask out here. Uh, and that way I can keep this thing flowing and eventually get to another question, uh, the questions inside the Tiger's Den. Now, in the case of Tilray, the question is, Dan just says, uh, can you please look at it? Well, for an entry point. All right. So on an entry point, subject to not looking at my other charts out here, what you want to write down, Dan, is this area, price area, 2407 to 2884. That's the bullish structured profile that formed on Friday. And on Friday, price tested at 2884, and it has moved off of that. So that may be you're looking for an entry point. That may have been the entry point out there. I don't know. We're going to go take a look at short-term time frame charts out here. Let's pull this over. Let's look at the daily, see what kind of signal we can get on uh, Tilray, if any. Let's get over to the actual current data out here. And that's a 30-minute time frame, okay, which we'll come back to since that had popped up. On the daily time frame out here, so I'm going to have you be patient, Dan. So we can see that price did hit that first level of support. But so far, today's bounce is really right up into that oscillator and change line, which is really about where we're trading right now. The exact number, I'll give you the exact number. Am I going to worry about the exact number right this second? 34.78. No, because, you know, I don't know what that exact number is going to be at the end of the day in this price. But I would say if price closes above 35, good chance that price is back above it. And, and that may have been an entry point. OK, so take a look at this. Now let's go look at the 30 minute time frame. But right now on the daily, it's not so fast. I wouldn't act at the moment. But back to that 30 minute time frame chart, I think I saw a TD9 count pattern. We did. So it bottomed at uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday with that TD9 count. Price is dealing with the resistance of the top of that 30-minute profile out here. So it's really sitting right at it. If price can close above this profile level, this profile level is 34.92 or 34.88, that would add to the possibility of a uh, bottom. Let's go to the 60-minute time frame chart out here, see if there's any signal. TD Nike, TD Nike out bottom, 35.44 is the resistance area that it's dealing with. So at 148 in the afternoon, Dan, we're not getting a clear signal. It may have bottom based upon that daily time frame chart, but we're not getting the confirmation that we need on the short term time frame charts in order for me to say that uh, to you. What you could do is you could enter a trade, take a, you know, uh, take a nibble out here, but have your stop below 2407. That's the bottom of that daily profile. Next question coming in from, uh, ACK, otherwise known as a Nantucket, but uh, I'm sure it was not Nantucket that sent it in. And this was a question to take a look at. Oh, this is from Joe. Planetier, PLTR. So let's take a look at PLTR. I can pull over just my white background charts and just looking for an analysis out here. So uh, due to the lack of time, the analysis is this. You've got a nice road momentum indicator top. Price is below the oscillator and change line, trading with inside its profiles. Price is going to go target 2727. If price does not hold that, that is the bottom of the profile, you should see it move all the way back to 1754. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside on this. Let's go see if this is an A to B equals CD with conviction, just simply with volume out there, PLTR. And the A to B equals CD pattern may give, well, will give us a price projection. So let's go put that price projection level in here. The A point being the high from January 27th, the B point being the low on uh, February 2nd, and the C point is the high from February 8th. 1 to 1 gets you down to 24.72. 1 to 1.272 gets you down to 20.78. Watch 27.27. 27. You'd really want to see some kind of bottom pattern signal on the intraday time frame charts before you would go after that. But right now it looks like, uh, Joe, PLTR wants to continue to head lower. We've also got a request to go take a look at U.S. Steel. This is for Vicky. And if we take a look at U.S. Steel right now, on its daily time frame, this is a positive. Let's uh, populate it with our tools out here. It's a positive, and that price is trading above a green oscillator and change line. I don't know if it's going to close above it. That's at 1760, uh, 1763. A close above 1763 today would be helpful to you, Vicki. Your question is 
went long this morning. So you're long this morning on U.S. Steel. 30 minute time frame chart. What do I have? What do we have for the out here? What the 30 minute time frame chart is telling you is you'd like to see a close above 1776. Saw that on the last half hour bar at 130. If this next bar can close above it, that's going to suggest run up to 1904. See roads with TFNN. Great. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89, exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let's see if we can get to all these requests out here. One of our denners wanted to take a look at ticker symbol FINV, Finvolution out here. And the question is, where is this thing headed to? Look, we've got the uh, longer term chart out here, the monthly, the very right hand panel. And what we can see is prices above the 0.786 retracement of its high from all the way back in December of 17 to its low in March of 2020. Once you get above, so these act as, can act as a support or resistance levels out here. In this case, this signal is that price is going to head back to the 945 level. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out with regard to where the charts are suggesting FINV is going to head to. We had a request from, um, from someone. Uh, no name out here to take a look at VDE. So let's go take a look at VDE. The question is, should I hold, should I sell, should I buy? Well, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, we're going to see prices moving higher, doing less relative energy, and today is going to become bar number nine of a TD nine count. I would not tell you to buy two potential topping patterns. 
The Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal needs to prove itself. I wouldn't have a problem necessarily telling you to buy that, but now you've got two that are out there. We're going to say, hey, hold on. Now, on a 30-minute time frame, what we don't have is any kind of uh, topping signal, break of support. But if this did pull back, 60-60 would be the area where you would be looking to um, go ahead and perhaps buy. We'd want to see what patterns are going on there. So I hope that helps you out. The last question for the day was to take a look at Chrono, C-R-O-N. We've got about 20 seconds to squeeze this in as we take a look at C-R-O-N on its daily time frame chart. What do we see out here? Clearly, there's an A to B equals C-D to the upside, confirmed by that bearish evening star candle. Price pulled back and tested support at 1133. If price closes above 1302 today, it looks like Kronos is going to want to go ahead and uh, try for ties again back at the 1583 level. Folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for two more great hours. My favorite polar bear, certainly your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. And after that, Tom O'Brien to take us on home. Thanks so much for being here on Taco and Terrific Tuesday. I'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday.